for me, the most important thing is that he was one of the founders of the SPC. Ladies and gentlemen, to the Dixon. Well, thank you very much, sir. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny, and now the time comes when we will redeem that pledge, not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. A moment comes, which comes but rarely in history, when we step out of the old and into the new, when an age ends and when the soul of a profession long suppressed finds utterance. It's fitting, therefore, on this solemn moment that we take a pledge of dedication to the service to our profession and to the patients we serve. Over a century ago, the profession started on her unending quest and trackless decades are now filled with both its strivings as well as its successes and its failures. Through good and ill fortune alike, chiropractors never lost sight of that quest or forgot the ideals which gave them strength. The achievements we celebrate today are but one step, an opening of opportunity to greater triumphs and achievements that await us. Are we brave enough and wise enough to grasp this opportunity and accept the challenge of the future? That future is one not of ease or resting, but incessant striving that we may fulfill that pledge that we have made. The service of our profession means the service of the millions who suffer from debilitating conditions. And the ambition of our founder was to end suffering for all. That may well be beyond us, but as long as there are tears and suffering, so our work continues. To all chiropractors, we make an appeal to join us with faith and confidence in this great adventure. We have to build a noble mansion of a fit and able society. And to do that, we need to train more chiropractors. The past clings to us still in some measure, and we have much to do before we redeem those pledges that we have so often made. Yet the turning point is past, and history begins anew for us now. <clears throat> A history that we shall live and act, and hopefully others will write about. A history that must involve both growth and development. The future beckons us. Which way shall we go, and what shall be our endeavour? Our aim must be to make our patients better so that they may live the life that so many of us take for granted. And we have hard work ahead. There's no resting for any of us till we redeem those pledges, till we make all of our patients what destiny intended them to be. We are members, I believe, of a great profession, on the verge of a bold advance. But we have to live up to that high standard. All of us, irrespective of what we may believe in, our chiropractors with equal rights, privileges and obligations. We cannot encourage narrow-mindedness, for no profession can be great whose members are narrow in thought or action. So, ladies and gentlemen, whatever with the past has gone, the best is yet to come. Thank you.